prior to the mall being here, there was a hotel, the Edgewater Gulf Hotel. And along with the hotel, there were stables, Olympic sized swimming pool, some beautiful gardens here. What, one of the unique things about the, the Edgewater Hotel was it was the Edgewater Gulf Hotel and it was a sister property to the Edgewater Beach Hotel on the lakefront in, of Lake Michigan and Chicago. Both very large hotels, the one in Chicago was 800 rooms, the one here was 400 rooms. And a lot of people from up north in Chicago in particular would travel back and forth between the two hotels based on the weather. And they would take the train. The train actually ran right through the property. The, the train tracks are still there today. Uh, but what's not there today is there was a train station behind the Edgewater Gulf Hotel where the people would detrain and, uh, and go to their hotel. And there was a beautiful golf course and so forth. Um, what uh, my memory of that hotel was in, in its later stages, it was the site of our junior senior prom in 1964. There was a building, a one story building out in the back on the north side of the property where events were held. And that was the site of our Notre Dame Sacred Heart High School Prom, 1964. The theme of our prom was Blue Bayou. Blue Bayou was a song by that was, that was very popular at the time. Uh, and um, that, so, so because of that was our theme, a local artist named Joe Moran, wasn't very well known at the time, painted for us a backdrop uh, for the, for, on the stage for our theme, the Blue Bayou. And, the, th and the, the theme portrait that he painted, which was about 20 foot wide and about 10 foot high on canvas, was a shrimp boat coming down the bayou. If you remember that Notre Dame High School was on the bayou, Keegan's Bayou. <laughs> Not a very navigable bayou, but it made for a good story. So he painted that backdrop, and after the storm, after the, uh, after the, uh, the, the party, it disappeared. Nobody knows where it went to. I was always curious about that, uh, that backdrop. When I moved back to Biloxi just three years ago, I contacted Mr. Joe Moran's son, Tommy, also a well-known artist in his own right, and asked if he remembered. He said he remembered actually helping his dad paint that painting. He helped do some of the, the work around the edges and so forth. And I said, well, Tommy, you think maybe you could recreate that for me? Which he did. That's Blue Bayou. That, that's what was on the stage behind us uh, at that dance. And this is a recreation of that by, uh, by Tommy Moran. And that's one of my memories of the, of the Edgewater Hotel was that last, was right in its later stages. Of course, the hotel disappeared in the 1970s, as did the Edgewater Beach Hotel in, in Chicago, when it went away also in the 1970s. Okay, we're talking about Edgewater. Edgewater, I guess the, the uh, Edgewater Gulf Hotel and, it, and of course the golf course related to the hotel and then 63, the mall, Edgewater Mall came along. Well, that golf course was not as old as, as the Great Southern Club, but it's been there a long time. And in particular, uh, I'm not sure of the date, that the, but there were six holes between uh, Pass Road and the railroad tracks part of that Edgewater Gulf, uh, and there was a train station there too. But anyway, those six holes were tremendous holes, very, very challenging. Number one, I think number nine, uh, number 16, 17, 18, uh, and one other, but uh, yeah, number 10 also. But they were great, challenging holes. My dad tried to get me to play golf in the 50s, but I didn't really get serious till in college and, and after college. And, and my dad played there along with his regular gang uh, game. And, and uh, that was, uh, I guess, in, in 68, 69. No, I, I do miss that, that one hole in particular. I think it was number uh, 16, which was uh, almost like an island, but it was surrounded by uh, uh, it, bamboo and if you hit into that bamboo it was over with so you take the stroke so I mean it was some great holes there 16 17 and 18 in particular I'm Terry Powell the general manager at Edgewater Mall Biloxi Mississippi uh, I've been here with the mall since uh, 1997 
Uh, prior to that, I worked for Gafer's uh, department store, which is where Dillard's is currently located. Uh, I arrived there in 1992. I, prior to that, had worked for Gafer's for 17 years. Tell you a little bit about what's going on with the mall as a whole right now. Uh, we have food, fun, and shopping. So the fun part, entertainment. We've added uh, the theater, uh, 36,000 square feet, eight screen theater, premier, working currently now on the Sky Zone, uh, located uh, down by J.C. Penney's. From a food aspect, we uh, just opened up a uh, brick and spoon on the south part of the property next to McDonald's. It's a very popular uh, breakfast, lunch, brunch uh, establishment that uh, has brought a lot of traffic for us and uh, they seem to do very, very well. Uh, located in that same facility with them is Verizon Wireless and K Jewelers. Within the mall itself, uh, one of the uh, big things coming up, uh, we've just signed a new deal with Charlotte Roos. Uh, as probably everyone knows, Charlotte Roos as a company went bankrupt. Somebody's bought them out of bankruptcy. This being one of their better stores in the company, have decided to open back the store here, Charlotte Roos in Edgewater Mall, which we're really excited about. That'll happen at the first quarter of 2020. Talk a little bit about history of the mall. In 1963, the mall, or at that time it was called Edgewater Plaza, opened. And it stretched from currently now where Dillard's to J.C. Penney's is at. Where Dillard's was at, there was a Gafer's department store. C.J. Gafer's was based out of uh, Mobile, Alabama. And uh, down at the end where Penny's currently is located, there was a Newberry's. Uh, that was a five and dime that was located there. And they closed in 79 and J.C. Penny's took the position. And then later in 96, J.C. Penny's expanded out to where there was an old Jitney jungle here in front of the mall. And the food court location, we had uh, Godshaw's department store, which no longer exists. Uh, to go back to the Gafer's position on the other end of the mall, they were uh, bought out by Dillard's in 1998 and subsequently changed their name at that point in time. Um, alongside them within the interior of the mall, some of the names that I recall and remember, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that remember some other names other than just what I can recall, but Grider Shoes, uh, Miss Grider, I remember her well, and her son Robbie, and he went on to operate the store here. And uh, the Epitome, I think, was also a, an original store in here, which uh, Pat Gill now operates, but his brother was actually the owner to start with, but they have been in here and a long-term tenant here in the mall. There was also a Walgreens drugstore down by uh, Gafer's, now Dillard's. In 1972, the Sears moved from downtown Biloxi into the position where the hotel was located at, and that wing was added onto the mall from Gafer's at that time on down to Sears. After that, the mall went under a remodel in 86, new tile floor. At one time, you had a all concrete floor here in the mall, and it had brick inlays in different positions in the mall around some planters and things of that sorts and uh, did an upgrade in, in, in 86 and some of the department stores also went into upgrades at that point and I think Gafer's took their home store and moved it across the street to Edgewater Village back in 86 and then in 97 we had a, a really huge remodel at that point throughout the mall completely and also at that point adding on McRae's department store, almost a 200,000 square foot store uh, on the east side of the mall and also built a parking deck that connected on the third floor to the department store itself. Since then uh, we've been through Katrina. Uh, that was a uh, uh, that was a disaster, <laughs> but uh, one, of the, one of the things I remember walking in the back door of the mall on that Monday at around one o'clock and the wind was still howling, all the glass and things were broken out of the mall and the door casings had blown out of the mall and I was waiting in the mall in water 
And I got down to the south entrance, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this is not too bad. This isn't bad at all. But I, I got down to the south entrance, and I had to prop myself against the wall to walk down the wall. The wind was still blowing that hard. And I looked out, and O'Charlie's was gone. It was completely gone, and it had collapsed and landed itself up in, bone, in front of Bonefish Grill, currently where uh, the Barefoot Billies is located on the south side of the mall. Uh, and I looked out at McDonald's and there was just a big shell. The bank that was located behind McDonald's on the south side of the mall was completely gone. The only thing left there was a vault. The bank vault was still standing. Uh, the gas station, the Chevron station, it was completely gone. Um, but, you know, the thing is, and I, I'm very proud to be able to say this, that, you know, I walked in the mall and, and my first thought was, you know, we got to get this thing back up. We got to get it going. So. I, I took a corner, we got a broom, we got a shovel, and, and I will say this, every employee that worked here for the mall, including all the housekeeping, all of my maintenance people, all of my security people, everybody showed up. The next day, everybody came in, and everybody started working to try to get this thing back together, and then subsequently, we had um, Jim Wilson Associates, which manages the property. The owners of the property, American National Insurance Company, sent big construction companies in, and, and we started putting this thing back together. And the first store to open back up, I believe, on the beach was Sears. And they opened up on September 28th. And if, if my memory is correct, that is the very first store open on Highway 90. The mall subsequently opened up on November the 16th with about 50 stores. And, you know, before the storm, we probably had close to 100, a little over 100 at that point store-wise, but, you know, by the time we got into later uh, date of 06, we were probably back up to our 100 stores. Um, at that point, we, we had a lot of deals to work out. The Dillard's deal was something we worked on for quite some time. They wanted to go in and change the shape of the store and uh, actually made the store a little bigger, and it took them until 2008 to reopen, but what a store. I mean, it's, one, it's uh, one of the key department stores here. It's a beautiful store inside, very well kept, really beautiful store. Since Katrina, uh, we've added back the McDonald's out parcel, and again, the uh, Brick and Spoon out parcel with Verizon and K. We've added a Raising Cane's where the uh, O'Charlie's was located at. We're currently working, and I think we just signed a deal with Pet Boys to take the old Sears Automotive position, and hopefully we'll have that open before the end of this year. Uh, again, we've added the uh, Premier Cinemas, 36,000 square feet, eight cinemas, and one of the great things about the Premier Cinemas here is that you come in and you buy a popcorn and you buy a drink, and you can refill it as many times as you want. And it's, that's really a great, great thing. We have some other out parcel things that we're currently working on that I can't mention the name of right now, but it's something everybody will know and it's very exciting. Inside the food court, we have some local people, uh, Gary and Kelly Anderson, that have opened up something called the Wild Wiener. And they do hot dogs and just about any kind of topping you could possibly think of. And it's a really a cute concept and we're really excited about that. Um, I have uh, something very unique in there called Belgican's fries, and it's, uh, he goes in and does fries on top of, uh, all kinds of toppings on top of fries and things. But those are a couple of the locals, uh, along with uh, Adam from Coffee Fusion out of Ocean Springs, has a coffee shop in here, uh, does very well, has some great coffee. Um, you know, subsequently some of the things too that have happened when J.C. Penney's has reopened, in addition to just opening up the J.C. Penney store, they've come in and they've added Sephora Cosmetics. They've added in Disney. So there's a lot of things that people don't even realize that we have here. And you know, if you, you're gonna see something new almost every time you come out. There's always something new and exciting going on. We've always got new tenants coming in, new deals going on, and, and we're really excited about the future. One of the things that we have here that, you know, you don't see in a lot of the regional malls, we have a lot of local flavor. We have local businesses in here, and some of the ones that I've spoke about, about the restaurants and things, are local people. Uh, the boba and beans in the food court, and also Bella Rose, they're, they're local. They're a great retailer in here. They do a really, really good job. But 
Also on top of that, pinups. Uh, she has a great concept where she goes in and she'll bring and have little uh, princess parties. Little girls go in and dress up like princesses and everything and they can get their nails done and have pedicures and all. It's, it's really a neat concept, very cute. And uh, Marisol's, that's another of our, our local boutiques. Uh, so we have a lot of local flavor. We have a puzzle store in here. There's very, I've, I think I've seen one other in the country and traveling around. And uh, David Murray, he's had a puzzle store in here probably since uh, the latter 90s. Uh, another thing that we have coming up this year uh, in the, uh, right near any Ann's, we have a uh, gentleman coming in that's taking oak whiskey barrels and they're making all kinds of different things out of these things. They'll have plaques with Mississippi State, Southern Miss and Ole Miss and things of that sort made out of the barrel heads but also using the staves and things for other things that uh, it's a really neat concept. Nothing that I've seen around here and I think it's something going to be really special for the mall during Christmas. He should open up sometime in November. Hello, my uh, name's David Murray. Um, had a crazy idea 22 years ago, 1997. Uh, thought I might start a puzzle store. Um, everyone laughed. <laughs> I was not sure if this was going to work. Uh, but I felt that if I was going to do this, I needed to be in a mall. It was necessary for the simple reason that no one would ever get in their car and drive to a puzzle store. It's the common area that gives me the customer base and it's when they walk by inside and see that there are puzzles in this store they go whoa what's this and that's when they come in. The range of what these companies do as far as producing a puzzle uh, range from, let's say, sports stadiums um, all the way to masterpieces, fine art, Van Gogh's, Degas, Michelangelo's, Da Vinci's. So, um, also, my age range. I have floor puzzles with 24 pieces for a three-year-old up to the largest puzzle in the world which is 42,000 pieces I get it out of Barcelona Spain and we have it built and framed and possibly the only one framed in the United States I'm Kelly Anderson. I'm here at the Wild Wiener, a new restaurant that we just opened in Edgewater Mall, inviting everyone here to come try our new Wild Wieners. And we call them Wild Wieners because we have some amazing toppings on top of hot dogs. So we've got sausages, nachos, hot dogs, six inch or 10 inch, and you can come and top it how you want to. We have some recipes already made up, but if you don't like those, you can always customize your own. Again, it's not only just a hot dog, it's hot dogs, sausages, four different types, and also nachos. You customize it, come see us at Edgewater Mall. We're so excited to be here and be a part of this growing mall. So come see us. Hi, my name is Nas Dahab, uh, owner of Smash Clothing here at Edgewater Mall. Uh, we've been here located at Edgewater Mall for five years doing great things here. Traffic's picking back up, new things are happening here, so uh, come out and visit us, shop with us, look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, social media. So we've been here 19 years in a variety of stores, uh, from clothing all the way to CBD. We're getting ready to launch a new location here in Edgewater Mall. Uh, it's a new venture, so we're branching off into something new here. Um, we've been doing various different businesses in and around Biloxi, majority of it here in Edgewater Mall. This is where the traffic seems to be going. You know, we offer here at, at Smash Clothing a variety of things for men and women. Uh, party dresses, going out dresses, New Year's dresses, outfits, uh, men. You can come get the same thing for your, yourself as well. So uh, yeah, come out and visit us here at Edgewater Mall. We're looking forward to seeing you guys.
Hi, I'm Luke from Belgicans Fries. You guys coming out and try our homemade fries. We make fries with everything you like on top of them. We start out with fresh Idaho potatoes. We peel them, we slice them, we cook them up twice and we put everything you like on top of them. We have some of our best sellers include buffalo chicken fries, barbecue pork fries, roast beef and gravy fries, and surf and turf fries. Those fries have Monterey Jack cheese with steak and shrimp. Anything you like on top of our homemade fries. We open during the mall hours. We start as early as 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. every day. If you don't like our specialties, you can create your own. We have some fries that you can start as plain as just plain fries, add cheese, add gravy, add some of our homemade dipping sauces. Whatever you like, we can cover it up on top of your fries. At Belgicans, it's not just fries, it's a meal. And I'm real proud of the Edgewater Mall and they're transforming themselves and so it's just not business as usual and you know you have to compete and you have to be innovative and I think that's what they're doing so you know it's been great to watch uh, uh, things evolve and you know we're we're trying to be helpful of uh, you know with maybe some new infrastructure you know the, the process to uh, take uh, Pops Ferry extending over railroad tracks to Highway 90 will uh, you know help uh, you know those uh, keep performance indicators for the mall. If you haven't been out to Edgewater Mall lately, come out, we have something for everyone. to do.